how do I want to live my life? Do I want to live the next 20 years the same way I lived the last 20? And not that the last 20 were terrible, but you know, that reevaluation point where you reach it, you go, huh, okay, I need to think about this instead of continuing to, let's say, drift through where everything is just fine, which is, you know, what I talk about all the time is it was fine, but do you want to live in fine forever or do you want something better than that? Welcome to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I'm your host, Kavita, and the founder of Power Purpose Play, a global community of women in midlife. I'm here to tell you that it's your time now to rediscover what has always been inside of you and bring that out into the world. If you're wondering what's next, but don't know quite what that is, or if you feel a twinge in your heart telling you that you have so much more to do and so much more to offer, you're in the right place. Ask yourself, if not now, when? Do you want to leave your job? Start your own business? Take control of your health? Reignite the passion in your marriage? Write that book, or at least that first chapter? Transitions like this can be daunting, but through listening to my story and interviews with incredible women every week, I hope to inspire you to take action. I rediscovered myself after the age of 50, and I know you can too. It's my time now to help you do just that. I'm so excited you're here. Let's dive in. Hi, my beautiful listener. I hope you're doing amazing. As I record this, I'm looking at the beautiful sunset and view of the Manhattan city skyline. It's so incredible to see all the thousands of buildings from this rooftop and imagine all the people with their busy lives, their work, their families. It's also so nice to finally be experiencing a bit of normalcy after two years of COVID restrictions. I want to share a milestone with you, and that is that we are celebrating our one-year anniversary of the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I really can't believe it. I'm amazed that I had the courage to start this podcast and that I have had the opportunity to interview such wonderful guests along the way. Every conversation is an opportunity for learning, and I hope you feel the same way. If you've been a loyal listener or even a new one, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. My mission with this podcast and with Power Purpose Play and our course, It's My Time Now, is to uplift and empower women in their 40s and beyond to make this next stage of your life the best stage ever on your terms. I'm here to guide you for my experience of reinventing myself at the age of 50. I'm also totally thrilled to share with you that I've officially received my certified professional coaching designation. In the last few years, I've gained a wealth of experience helping women like you overcome obstacles in your way and gain the confidence to take your next steps. I wanted to obtain an official designation to supplement my previous education And I'm pleased to say that I am now a certified core energy and life transitions coach. I would be thrilled to help you rediscover your true why, limit the internal blocks in your way, and gain the confidence in yourself so you can create a fulfilled and happy next stage in life. My coaching practice is officially open. So if you want me as a personal coach to guide you in my personalized program, or if you prefer group coaching with me, It's in the It's My Time Now program, which begins on March 22nd. Contact me today for a free consultation. I feel truly blessed and grateful today to have achieved these two milestones, and I hope you will celebrate with me. Gratitude is a topic we discuss on today's episode with Lori Seitz. Enjoy, and thank you again for being such a wonderful support for our mission. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. I hope you're doing well today. And uh, if you are new to this podcast, I'm your host, Kavita Ahuja, and the founder of Power Purpose Play. We are a global platform which is dedicated to advancing the personal growth and inner power of women in midlife. Every week, I interview incredible women who will serve as an inspiration for you and who will give you examples of how to face the obstacles in your way and take that first step towards reinvention. I'm looking forward to my conversation today with Lori Seitz. 
Lori is the CEO of Zen Rabbit and host of the podcast, Fine is a Four-Letter Word. She's an award-winning writer, speaker, and broadcaster, and a nationally recognized expert in using gratitude and meditation as shortcuts to success. The most difficult thing she's ever done is leave a 22-year marriage. That experience inspired her transformational journey. Through her programs, Lori now guides corporate teams and private clients to a place of unprecedented clarity, peace, and productivity. So welcome to the podcast, Lori. It's so great to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. How are you doing today? Doing well. Doing great. Well. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to get into the conversation with you today and learn all about your background. And before we get into what we're, you currently are doing, please share your, your journey of uh, transformation. And I understand I talked a little bit about Zen Rabbit and you had a baking company, I believe, and introduced the world to the gratitude cookie. So tell us a little bit about that and how all that led you to where you are today. Yes, that's right. So I have a background in marketing and corporate communications and broadcasting. And I started my first business in 2003, and that was the baking company. So it was Zen Rabbit Baking Company, Mm -hmm. was making and selling a product called the Gratitude Cookie, which was based on a family recipe, kind of the every food entrepreneur's story, because I would make them for friends and family and people with, oh my gosh, these are so good. You should sell these. Okay. <laughs> so when I finally- What kind did, of cookies were they? Sorry to they're, interrupt. No, they're kind of a cross between a butter and a sugar cookie. Ooh, nice. And they're rolled out really thin. Ah. Uh, so yeah. very basic, but that's what makes them so good. Real yeah. butter, real sugar, yeah. real yeah. vanilla. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're amazing. <laughs> nice. Still. But I was, it was never my goal to be just a cookie company. Mm. Because of my background in marketing, I created a product, a tool- for businesses to say thank you to their clients and to people who sent them referrals. And so I packaged them and, and marketed them as that. And so that was, yeah. So that was a little bit different way. I ran that business for 11 years, couldn't scale it quite the way I wanted to. So I ended up shutting it down and then went into teaching networking strategies because as a, what I call a quiet person, like it would be intimidating sometimes to walk into a room full of people where I didn't know anybody. But when I started that first business, I, that's what you have to do as a business owner mm-hmm. and start conversations. So I started teaching other people how to do what I had learned and then pandemic and nobody was going to events. So they didn't right. need those kind of networking skills. And so I was asked to do a presentation on gratitude actually. So it brought me back into that whole world of talking about gratitude gratitude for business, gratitude for personal development. And that evolved into where I am now with my coaching program and creating meditations. And yeah, and talking again about the power of gratitude and meditation and visualization to to fuel success. Mm -hmm. That's so innovative that you you had this product and Anyone could have a product and, and just put it out there, but you, you attached a, a meaning to it with mm-hmm. the gratitude. And uh, it's, it's interesting how it came back kind of almost full circle to what you're doing now. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I don't know what the universe is trying to tell me, but in the past, I don't know, six, eight, 10 weeks, people keep asking me about these cookies. Like, are you ever going to do them again? Can I help you? How can I how can I help you revive them? I'm like, I sold all the equipment. I don't know that they're ever coming back, but maybe I might be thinking about it because it's <laughs> yeah. <keeps> coming up. <laughs> right. Interesting. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's a really interesting story. And as you know, this, this podcast all is, is about midlife transitions and transitions that we go through in life. And often what happens is that we have these triggers as we go through life and they make us kind of reflect on what our next step is. And I always suggest that people look and act before those triggers actually happen. But usually what what happens is we have these triggers and then we, we decide to do something 
or we really want to do something, but we're afraid, right? Mm -hmm. And where we tell ourselves that we can't possibly do that for a whole bunch of reasons, whether we're unsure of ourselves, we've got the fear of failure or fear of what will people think, or even the fear of success, right? So did that happen to you? And like, how did you overcome some of these blocks or tell us some about the, some of the fears that you may have had as you did your many ventures? The trigger that, oh, that was kind of a key, a linchpin trigger, if you will, is that when I was shutting that business down, and first of all, as an entrepreneur, we are told to never give up. Mm -hmm. Like you just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And at some point we have to stop if it's not working and evaluate, should I keep going in a direction that seems like it's not working? And that whether you're an entrepreneur or not, we, we have this idea that if we give up, we're failing. And that was a really difficult thing to overcome, to understand that, okay, I maybe just don't have the ability or the tools or the knowledge or whatever it is. This business isn't going to become what I think it, it should be or could be because I'm just not at that point to do it yet. So taking, like acknowledging that shutting it down or taking a different direction is not failing. That hmm. was huge. That was so difficult because that was my identity. That's who I was for 11 years. If I didn't have that business, then who am I? Right. And, and am I now a failure because I'm shutting the business down? So does that make me a failure? And then what's your definition of failure and that whole thing? But mm -hmm. all of that happened. I had decided to shut the business down and then my mom passed away. She, had been, she was diagnosed with an acute form of leukemia and mm -hmm. passed away six weeks later. So that was a turning point for me because I started looking at life. She was only 73 years old. Sorry to hear that. What was, Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What? So how do I want to live my life? Do I want to live the next 20 years the same way I lived the last 20? And not that the last 20 were terrible, but you know, that reevaluation point where you reach it, you go, huh? Okay. I need to think about this instead of continuing to, let's say drift through where everything is just fine, which yes. is, you know, what I talk about all the time. Is, yes. It was fine. Yeah. <laughs> but do you want to live in fine forever or do you want something better than that? Yes. You said some really interesting things there. I'd like to go back to in terms of the, the definition of failure. And I think that, I think that if we don't fail, we don't, we're not moving forward. Right. And you learn from your failures, quote unquote, and the obstacles that you face and how you get over those. And for you to realize that, okay, this isn't working. I want to do something else. And also to, to have the death of your mom. Also, that's a trigger. And, and that's what usually happens These transitions in life. There was a quote from uh, a lady that Linda Rossetti, who studies transitions. And she says that there's three parts of it. There's a, there's the, um, the trigger, and then there's a decision and then there's action, right? Mm. So in that case, yeah, I guess you had a couple of triggers. One was the, your business and then your mom and, but then you decided to made the decision to, to change and figure out what it is that you're going to do next. And that is the whole reason I'm doing this is because we don't have to live the same way we were doing. We were living for the rest in the last 30 years because we were used to, we were just normally we're used to doing that. If everything is fine, it's great, but we want everything to be amazing, right? So how can right. we do that? <laughs> right. So so on the flip side, I mean, I know that when women and people generally have fear of what they're going to do, they have to develop the courage in order to go ahead and do it. And there was a Mandela's favorite quote, favorite famous quote is, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. Yeah. So when you think about that and... How, how would you recommend, or as, especially as women in midlife, right? How do we find the courage to really take that first step? Because it's really about taking that first step. It is. It starts with getting clear on what your values are. What is important to you? What are those key values that you are about that you don't want to compromise regardless of what happens? Mm -hmm. So getting clear on your values and then clear on what you would like to see your life, you know, how would you like your life to look? Who do you want to be? I love looking at it as far as we ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? 
But I think a far better question to ask them and ourselves at any point in our life is who do I want to be? Mm. And so yeah. figuring out the answers to those things fuels your courage because now you have, you're coming from a place of conviction. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is where I'm going. And now you have clarity. When you have clarity, it's a lot easier to then find the courage to take the steps and to move through the fear. Now, as you said, courage is not necessarily the absence of fear because you can feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But when you're coming from a place of conviction, Mm -hmm. it strengthens that courage. Yes. That's amazing. And I, be, I, I believe in that too. It, it's it, when you start from getting clear on who you are and what you like, for you said values, it's also your strengths perhaps. Mm-hmm. And what are your passions, right? Those are some of the things you get clear on. And then the piece about who do you want to be? I think that maybe ties into your practice of visualization. Yes. Is it? Okay. Yes. It all yeah. ties into the practice yes. of visualization because I think it was it was Walt Disney who said something about the imagination is the preview of what's coming in your life. Mm-hmm. Something that's completely paraphrased, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's what visualization does. Yeah. It is is it's helping you imagine what does this future self look like? And so if you can get to a place where you're visualizing it and feeling, how would you feel when you are in that life? When you can see that those pictures and feel those feelings over and over and over again today, as if it is real today, it magnetizes it to make it happen and come into your life faster. I know that sounds like some kind of magic voodoo. No, not to me. There's actually, <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe to some of your listeners, but there's actually science and research behind how and why that works. And it's like setting a GPS Mm-hmm. for your mind. So when you set that, you you keep looking, seeing those, visualizing that, that, that which you would like to have, and you're feeling gratitude for it, and you're feeling happiness as if it's already happening. You're strengthening that GPS. Like you just keep getting closer and closer and closer. It's like pulling it towards you. Right. I completely believe that. And I have a whole module dedicated towards virtualization in my course, but that's what Abraham Hicks says is, is if you believe in, in uh, whatever's going to be coming. So it's a manifestation of your beliefs and you just really meditate on that. And you almost, it, it almost as though you feel as though it's already happened. Mm-hmm. And as you said, you feel it and you believe it and you visualize it and you can see it then uncanny things will happen in your life, right? Which will will help you realize that or will actually make that those things that are not manifested yet manifest, right? And, right, uh, yeah. right. Makes them real. It's that the belief, a lot of us are taught that you believe something once you see it. Mm-hmm. However, the way it really works is, or wait, it's you see it and then you believe it. Mm-hmm. But the way it really works is you have to believe it first right? and then you will see it Yes, because it does exist on some level. Mm-hmm. It's maybe not manifested into your physical world, but the fact that you have the idea for it and you get ideas that I don't get. Yes. So those are the things that are meant for you. Mm-hmm. And I get the ideas that are meant for me. So they already exist on some level. Mm-hmm. When you're doing this visualization, it's bringing it closer to you on this, like on this plane in this physical. Space. Yes. Yes. I believe that's so important. I, I don't know if you follow Tara Moore, but uh, she has a, a something that's called an inner mentor. And I, I've talked about that in, in previous podcasts, but oftentimes we have internal we have external mentors, let's say people who we look up to in our work or in celebrities. And we say, I'd like to be like that person. And that's my goal to, that's my mentor. But she talks about an inner mentor, which is you 20 years from now, or however many years from now. And in the visualization, it's visualizing your inner mentor. So you kind of strive to be your best self. So that's a really, yeah, that's that's so a really cool. yeah, that's a really interesting kind of visualization exercise to do. So that's wonderful. And so 
in kind of in the same vein, you are a, um, a national recognized expert in meditation and manifesting goals faster. And obviously I, I believe in that as well. I'm a huge believer in the power of meditation, but the one thing that I, I was curious about is that word faster that you use or that you say that practically manifest our goals faster. So how, yeah. how, what, can you explain a little bit about what you mean by that? Yeah. We live in a society that tells us the key to hard work, the key to getting to your goals is to work hard. Mm-hmm. So everybody's out there working as hard as they can. What else do I need to know? What else do I need to do? What else do I need to learn? What actions do I need to take? Mm -hmm. How do I make this happen? And so when we talk about meditation and visualization, that to me, because we just talked about how when you're visualizing, you're magnetizing the situation towards you. You're pulling it towards you. You're only visualizing it. You're not actually doing, like that could be considered work, I guess, but it's not like you're on the phone making a hundred cold calls. You're not pounding the pavement, knocking on doors. You're mentally attracting this stuff to you as a supplement. Okay. Cause I know that some people get this idea that, Oh, okay. Well then all I need to do is sit and visualize. Right. No, you still need to take the actions, but you're taking inspired actions. So you're opening the channel to get messages from the universe, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, to take inspired action. So instead of just running around all frenzied 24 seven hustle, mm-hmm. you're taking some time to connect to your inner self, that inner guide that you're talking about, the future you, your, what did you call it? The inner mentor. Inner mentor, right. You okay. Can, yeah, yeah. You, inner self or, yeah. Yeah, so you're yeah, connecting yeah. to it uh-huh. and you're getting downloads and messages. And it might be intuition, you could call it. it. Whatever it is, you're opening that channel so that the actions you are taking are the most effective ones. Right. You're not just spinning and doing like whatever action I, you know, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do that. You can be more relaxed about it mm. and have this knowing. So I say that it it speeds it up because again, you're magnetizing it to you and you're taking inspired action instead of just random action. Interesting. So what you're saying is when you actually tune in to uh, the other word for it would be source, then you kind of know what is the right thing to do. And so you the inspired action is such that it'll help you get to what you want, I guess, faster because you're not doing all the other fluff, right? Right. You still have to do, but you're also, so would you say that this is what I'm trying to do more and more is like, as I go through my day, I have a task and I'm, I'm, I ask myself, is this what I'm going to about to do? Is this, is this leading me to what my goal is? Or is this just extra stuff that I don't need to do? Right. Right. And if it's not, if it's not leading me, or if it's just whatever. Sometimes it's natural. We, we go on social media and we spend hours on it. And, it's, and then before you know it, an hour has gone by and it's like, mm-hmm. that was not inspired action. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So but it, it felt you were busy. Right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a really good point is that you can be busy, but is it, is it inspired action? And is it something that's going to lead you to your goals? So I guess that, that, that explains it very well. I was, I was curious as to what you meant by that. So thanks for any yeah. tips on how to do that? Or? There's a book, Gary Keller, who is the founder of Keller Williams Real Estate, the real estate company, Keller yeah. Williams, mm-hmm. wrote a book called The One Thing. And it talks about, so he has a, a graphic and it talks about the one thing. I think it's seven different, I have it up here. Yeah, seven different areas of your life. But like, what is the one thing? What is the one thing I can do that such that by doing it, everything else becomes unnecessary. Mm. And so when you're tapping into that universal voice power, whatever, it's helping you again, get clarity on what is that one thing. So you may not need to do 10 things. Maybe you don't need to be on every social media platform. Maybe you only need to be on LinkedIn. Yes. What is the one thing that makes everything else unnecessary? Mm. That's really powerful because actually, as you said that, I was like, 
this is what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm really, cause sometimes you get yourself into so many different things and you mm-hmm. think by getting into doing all these different things that something's going to land or you stick things to the wall and something will, you throw things to the wall and something will stick. Right. 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 But rather than doing that, why not just, it's like a, a gambling, right? Do I know, yeah. you know, instead of doing that, be more precise about what you do. Precise and deliberate. Yes, exactly. Interesting. So wanted to talk to you a little bit about, or to talk to you about gratitude, starting from the gratitude cookie and, and, and now what you're doing. And one of the things is, especially now in the last two years, and we've still been all at home and all the suffering that's going on in the world with COVID. How do you explain gratitude when we have to deal with everyday life and challenges? Now, some people are kind of, yeah, that's all fine, but I still have to, I still have to see the suffering around me or I still have to go to work and I still have to put food on the table and all that. So how, how, how would you explain that to your clients? Gratitude is a choice. It's a, yeah. it's a, a choice of how do you want to see life? In general, you can, you mentioned Abraham Hicks earlier, the energetic scale. Gratitude is at the top. Gratitude is the highest. Gratitude and love are essentially the same. At the highest energetic level you can reach. The bottom of the the ladder there is frustration, anger, disappointment, overwhelm. So when you choose to see gratitude, and find gratitude in every situation. Again, that's a choice. You can find it in even the most, mm, the situations that don't look like there's any gratitude there. You can find it. So people tend to love to complain and criticize. Like that comes really easy to us as humans. That's very level one energy. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> yeah. and nobody questions. Yeah. Like everybody joins in. Mm-hmm. That's a choice though, to go there. And it is equally a choice to go to gratitude. So you can look for things to complain and criticize, and you can look for things to be grateful for. So where do you want to live? What energy do you want to live in? Right. Yes, you may need to go to work and work at a job that you don't particularly like because that's what's putting food on the table, money in the bank right now. Yeah. However, you can find gratitude for something in that. Like, well, I'm grateful I have a job. I'm grateful I get to do this thing that I love that allows me to then provide dance lessons for my child. Whatever it is, where where in there is the gratitude? Because there always it's always in there. You just need to look for it and find it. Right. It's how you choose to to it's a perception and it's your it's your perspective of life, right? Right, right. Yes. And then how does it feel when you're living in anger, or frustration? Or it doesn't feel very good. Right. How does it feel when you're living in a place coming from a place of gratitude and, oh, okay, this feels lighter. It feels better. Now, we're not saying ignore what is happening in the world, the world events, and the, but you're just looking at it through a different lens. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Uh, my coaching training it talks all about that it's a energetic self-perception and it's there are seven levels of energy and and like you said like level one and there's two different types of energy one's catabolic which is destructive it's the anger and it's the conflict and victim Mm -hmm. mentality Mm -hmm. and then there's anabolic which is constructive energy right so how do we go from catabolic to anabolic levels of energy and it's again it's a choice it's about how you see things. And, uh, but at the same time, if you don't like the circumstances that you're in, you can choose to change it as well. Exactly. Right. It always comes back to choice. Yes. Don't yeah. feel like and, you're a victim of it. In other words. Right. Yes. Right. Victim is negative energy. And mm-hmm. this actually affects your physical health, physical, sure. psychological, mental, emotional, all of those. But physically, when you live in this place of anger, and resentment, things happen in your body oh, yes. that are not <laughs> right. Well, not hormones are you know, negative hormones or chemicals are released, and yes, yeah. yes. Right. And when you live in a state of gratitude, those feel good chemicals are released. Your body is your cells are happier. 
Yes. I don't think that it's the word coincidence. Like I don't believe in coincidences. I'm going to bring up Betty White because the woman lived to be 99 years old. Yeah. Not for nothing. She was a very optimistic, grateful, positive outlook. Always smiling, right? Always smiling. That doesn't mean she didn't have problems in her life or that she didn't see reality, Mm. what people call it. That she was always wearing rose-colored glasses. That's not necessary. But she chose to see the better side of things and maybe, and then say, okay, so I see this isn't the most ideal situation. How can I make it better? Hi, my friend, Kavita here. Do you often feel blocked from moving forward? We all feel that way at times. These are referred to as energy blocks. I've created a short, actionable PDF guide to help you release your negative energy blocks. Click the link in the description to download it now for free. Now, let's get back to the episode. Again, it's about perspective, right? Yeah. 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 So tell me practically in terms of your gratitude, how you practice gratitude and meditation. What are some, I mean, is there like a morning routine that you do? Or is there something that you recommend for, for your clients in terms of like a gratitude journal or is there other tools that you have? A couple of things. So one thing is I, I personally use meditation. So I meditate every morning before I get started in my day because it helps me set my, set the tone for the day, set my intention for the day. And I use different meditations. I actually use an app called Insight Timer. Mm -hmm. And I love choosing different meditations out of there. And then I don't use a gratitude journal. I know that sounds kind of crazy because everybody talks about recording their gratitudes every day or every yeah. night. And but I have friends who use it and it works for them. They use it at night and record the top three things they were grateful for that day, for example. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's a matter of finding what works for you. But I do believe that finding time to, whether it's meditate, prayer, what, however you want to phrase it, mm-hmm. to get quiet and get in touch with that inner voice because we have all of these things going on outside of us, social media, the TV, news, whatever it is you're paying attention to, all of these outside voices telling us what to think, how to act. Okay, what is your inner voice saying? What is your inner guide saying? That mentor. Mm -hmm. And the only way to hear it is to get quiet. And meditation, I find, does that. Yeah. Really well. Well, hundred percent. And then I do that every morning and and I truly believe in uh, that. One of the principles is in our training is that all answers lie within. Mm -hmm. If you really just sit and contemplate, the answers will come. Sometimes you, you're in the shower and you have, (laughs) you're just calm and relaxed. And then you come up with this great idea or you're, it's the middle of the night and you're sleeping and you wake up and you have this great idea, write those down because those answers are coming from your, from your inner core. Right. So I uh, totally believe in that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing that you talk about is that, um, well, these tools that you, you know, we talk about the meditation, whether or not you a uh, journal or whatever there, you, you talk about them as a shortcut to success. So in your opinion, what is, what does success mean? Mm-hmm. Everyone has their own definition of success because what success means to me may be different than what success means to you. So success to me includes freedom, freedom of time, freedom of monetary freedom, freedom to make the the decisions to do whatever it is I want to do and not be constrained by, oh, I don't have the money or I don't have the time or whatever it is. Success to me has a component of freedom Mm -hmm. and it has a component of being in good, fulfilling relationships. Hmm. And that's not necessarily a romantic relationship. It's friendships. It's relationships with colleagues. Success to me is connection, Hmm. deep connection to others. So not just connected to 3,500 people on LinkedIn, connected (laughs) connected at the heart. Is that how many people you have on LinkedIn? (laughs) Yes. And I feel like that's just a, that compared to some people who have 30,000. Yeah. Yeah. See, I know comparing. I know, right. <laughs> Comparison is the thief of happiness, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. 
No, uh, but, but I mean, connected at the heart. Yes. Really, I, you I'm know that <laughs> person I know. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, success is connection and freedom. Nice. I think that's so important for people to really sit down and, and ask themselves, what does success mean to me? I asked you that now I'm thinking about what does that mean to me? And for me, it means fulfillment Mm -hmm. and it means abundance, but that doesn't necessarily mean abundance of wealth. It means abundance in every, of love, of everything in our, in in my life. So I, I think if you ask those questions of what does success mean to you and really think about it, and like you said, connection and, and family, and especially now in the last couple of years, we have, I think more and more come inwards to ask ourselves, what do we really want and how are we going to shape our lives moving forward to put those values and meaning of success forward into our lives. So I think more and more people are doing that. I don't know if you've seen that in your practice, but yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, asking, so asking the question of what does success mean to you and then putting those values that we talked about earlier Mm -hmm. underneath that. Yes. Okay. If this is success, then these are the values that need to, that I need to adhere to. And how can I incorporate them into what I'm doing? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wonderful. This is a, I love this conversation. I could talk about this stuff for, <laughs> for all, forever. Yeah. It's really, uh, it's, I'm getting more and more, and the more you get into it, the more you learn. And it's just the energy, the energy piece for me is very important because I really believe we're truly connected and in all ways. And uh, so that that's really important to me, but so tell us what you're doing now and tell us firstly, what is Zen rabbit and <laughs> tell you, you also have a podcast. So tell us a little bit what you do and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. So we mentioned at the top of the podcast, the, the baking company was Zen yeah. rabbit baking company. So Zen rabbit has evolved. It was a great name. It's great branding. So Zen rabbit, still the company name. And so under the under Zen Rabbit, I, I have the coaching piece. I do workshops for for corporate teams yeah. and individuals. Yeah. And then I have a podcast called Fine is a Four Letter Word. Hmm. Talking about stories of people who have been stuck in a place where they said everything was fine, but it really wasn't fine. Yeah. Yeah. They just weren't either didn't want to admit it to anyone else or didn't even want to admit it to themselves. That's great. I love that title. It's very catchy. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of a lot of fun. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So that's wonderful, Lori. Thank you so much. That maybe a couple of last words for this audience in particular is women in midlife and looking forward to the next chapter. And my goal is to help them make the next chapter their best chapter. So any any words of advice or last things that you want to say? Yeah, I think in my program it's I have three pillars. It's called the trilogy for success and it's gratitude, connections, and courage. All of the three things that we talked about today. Yes. So yeah, I think it's taking a deep dive into those three areas that will help move forward, move into the next phase of life. Those are so important. Gratitude, connection, and courage. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. And, uh, yeah. I Thank you. Meditate. <laughs> that's my last word meditate <laughs> awesome so how can we find you i will have the all your links in the show notes but uh any any if anybody wants to find you uh, maybe you can let's of best course place. of course zenrabbit.com is okay. the website i'm on linkedin all the time linkedin is the best place to find yes. me so that i'm not overwhelmed on all the socials like we talked about yeah and um <laughs> and yeah and again that if you wanted to find my podcast fine is a four-letter word Fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing all your uh, great insights and your story. And uh, I'm sure it's going to benefit a lot of people. I think uh, the more and more we talk about these important topics, um, especially now in the environment we're living in, the more we can put positivity out there, I think. Yeah. uh, The more we can raise, the more each person can raise their vibration. Yes. The more the vibration of the entire world gets raised. And that's such a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Lori. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Lori Seitz. We had so much to discuss on the topics of gratitude, meditation, and going from just fine to fabulous. Here are her key takeaways. Number one, if you know who you are, what you stand for, and where you're going, you develop clarity, which leads to courage, 
which helps you take the steps to move forward through the fear. Number two, visualization helps you imagine what your future self looks like. How would you feel when you are in that life? When you see that picture and feel those feelings over and over again today, as if it was real today, it magnetizes it towards you faster. Number three, a lot of us are taught that if we see something, then we'll believe it. But how it really works is if you believe it first, then you will see it. Number four, what is the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else becomes unnecessary? Five, gratitude is a choice. How do you want to see life? Gratitude is at the highest energetic level you can reach. Six, you can look for things to complain and criticize, and you can look for things to be grateful for. Where do you want to live? What energy do you want to live in? Number seven, how does it feel to live in anger or frustration versus living in a place of gratitude? Look at things through a different lens. Eight, finding the time every day to get quiet and get in touch with your inner voice is so important. What does your inner guide say? Meditation helps you do that. Remember, all answers lie within. Number nine, what does success mean to you? And 10, the more we can raise our own vibrations, the more the vibrations of the entire world gets raised. Thank you again for listening. I hope these lessons provide you with such inspiration to bring into your own life. Again, reach out to me if you're feeling stuck. What do you want to do with this precious life of yours? If you're confused on your next steps, I can guide you with a proven process or just to listen to what you need. Reach out to me with any questions or a free consultation. In love and in light, until next time, have a beautiful week.